Okay, so in this video, we really want to start developing our intuition about how we can predict changes to uh, market fundamentals, such as equilibrium quantity and equilibrium price, that may be attributable to market forces. So we're going to think about what causes changes in supply and changes in demand, as well as thinking about uh, what the implications of those changes may be. So that really is, I think, the primary value of this video when it comes to your professional life, is that when you understand how supply and demand shift in response to market forces, then you're going to be able to predict how prices will change, or at least the direction in which prices will change in response to uh, various factors and influences that are occurring throughout the economy or in society. Additionally, uh, if we understand how supply and demand change and how that impacts the equilibrium price and quantity, then we can predict welfare losses that may be due to changes in policies which would impact market forces. And so if we're thinking about uh, directing a particular policy to achieve a uh, desired outcome, then we can be aware of how welfare may change in response to that. And lastly, uh, you need to know all of this content covered in this video for this class so that you uh, will know what changes in response to changing market forces and also importantly, what will not change. And it's possible to, to overthink this situation, overthink this problem. We want to try to avoid that if we can. So just as we could read a demand curve in two ways, both start with the uh, quantity, go up and see what the marginal benefit or the willingness to pay for that quantity would be, or starting with the price and seeing how many uh, units are bought and sold at that price, we can read an increase in demand or a decrease in demand in two ways as well. So we could see that, uh, first of all, that an increase in demand uh, can be interpreted as a greater willingness to pay for the same quantity. So starting with a quantity of 70 units going up and seeing that the willingness to pay under the original demand curve was $25 for that 70th unit. But now with the new demand, the willingness to pay is $50 for that 70th unit. And this same goes for every quantity uh, demanded, that for the 80th unit, which is demanded, the original willingness to pay was, let's say, $10. And the new willingness to pay is $25 for that 80th unit. So both of those reflect a greater willingness to pay for the same quantity and for every quantity. The other way to interpret an increase in demand is by thinking of it as a greater quantity demanded at the same price. So originally, when the market price is $25, the initial quantity demanded was 70 units. However, when there's an increase in demand, then the quantity demanded when the price is $25 is now 80 units, and the same would go for uh, increase in the quantity demanded of uh, unit price of $50. So it's important to understand both of these interpretations that an increase in demand means both a greater willingness to pay for the same quantity and a greater quantity demanded at the same price. And being able to um, conceptualize or just incorporate both of those definitions in your understanding is going to, to pay benefits later in this class. So when we think about what specific forces or trends impact demand, uh, we can come up with a list. And I've had students in the past uh, think of different uh, mnemonic devices or acronyms for these different uh, factors. And if you want to do that, that's up to you. I'm not sure if I ever heard one uh, that I thought was any better than any others. But um, as long as you are able to memorize each of these different factors, then you should be in good shape. And obviously be aware of which direction demand will shift in response to whether uh, a factor increases or decreases. 
So the first one that we can think of is the taste uh, and greater um, popularity of an item or a uh, new taste for that item, that good or service, leading to an increase in demand. Similarly, if, there, if an item becomes less popular, then demand will decrease. So I'm not sure, do we still see many people buying uh, Crocs? I, I don't know, actually, oh, my favorite example was something that I'd never heard of, but when I uh, taught this class in the past, I've had students say Webkins. Maybe that's something around when you were in middle school or elementary school at this point, but uh, for my generation, it was uh, Gigapets. That at one point in time, that was really popular to have this little digital programmable um, pet and you can feed it and clean up after it. And now nobody has any taste for that. And so the demand is completely shifted all the way to the left. And so we use that synonymously with the decrease in demand is a shift to the left and an increase in demand is a shift to the right. So another important factor here is when the population which is going to buy the good increases then the demand increases. If a good is a normal good, meaning the richer you become, the more that you buy, then an income increase would increase the demand. Uh, we can think of the price of related goods being if the price of a substitute rises or the price of a complement falls, then the demand will increase. And importantly here, we also need to think about the future expectations uh, which would encourage buying. And so perhaps you think that the price of this good is going to uh, increase in the future. And so that's going to temporarily increase the demand curve for that product now. Uh, similarly, the reverse case for each of those different factors would lead to a decrease in demand. So make sure you're, you're familiar with these. These should be intuitive um, and make sense. We just want to think about what forces are leading people to buy more and what forces are leading people to buy less. So I am using images from videos from the Marginal Revolution University uh, taught by Tyler Cowen and uh, Alex Tabarrok from George Mason University. And if you want any background or uh, more information, further education, on supply and demand, I would highly recommend that resource. These are uh, two, I think, talented and gifted educators and instructors, and they obviously have been uh, working on making these videos for a longer period of time than we have here at K, and have done so explicitly to reach out to people digitally, uh, not related to the pandemic. So if you like the way these images look, if they look crisp, then I would recommend going to Marginal Revolution University but they also have a similar image to the one that we use to consider uh, how we could interpret an increase in demand. And so we wanna think about an increase in supply. We can use that same uh, terminology that we used in the previous slide that an increase in supply is always gonna be a rightward shift of the supply curve. And the two different ways in which we can read uh, an increase in supply is by once again, thinking of the willingness to sell the same quantity at lower prices. And so when uh, originally the uh, price would have needed to have been $50 under the old supply curve to sell the 80th unit, now it only needs to be $10. And so another way of thinking about that is marginal cost. So the marginal cost of production of the 80th unit was $50, and now the marginal cost of production of the 80th unit is $10. We could also uh, think about another way of viewing this, which is that there is a greater quantity supplied at the same price. So originally, under the old supply curve, when the price was $10, then there would only have been 20 units which were um, produced on the market. However, under the new supply curve, when the price is $10, there are now 80 units. And so once again, these would be the case for 
every price and every quantity on the original supply curve. So being able to, once again, kind of integrate this, both of these definitions into your thinking is going to be beneficial. Now, whereas when thinking about all of the different factors and forces which could cause an increase or decrease in demand and coming up with a mnemonic device to memorize those, when you think about what could cause a shift in the supply curve, really you just have to think of one word and that word is cost. If we have an increase in the cost of production in any way, then the supply curve will shift left, it will decrease. If we have a decrease in the cost of production, the supply curve will shift right. Hopefully this is intuitive and makes sense to you, but we'll think of some specific examples here on the next slide. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a couple graphs which demonstrate the importance of cost in determining shifts of the supply curve. And as we can see, when the supply curve shifts to the right, when supply increases, we associate that with market forces which are going to lead to a lower cost of production. So obviously when the price of inputs, when the price of a good needed to make another good, such as when the price of wood decreases, then the cost of housing would go down. Um, that's going to shift the supply curve out. Improve technology when it becomes uh, more efficient and cheaper to produce an automobile, such as using um, automation rather than uh, relying on manual labor, then the supply curve will also increase. When there are lower taxes, obviously that makes it uh, cheaper to produce, it reduces the cost. And uh, we would say the same thing about natural conditions favorable for production. So if it rains more in a given year uh, and it increases the, the growth of a particular crop, then there's less uh, cost needed to irrigate those crops. And so all of these are going to drive the supply curve to the right and increase the supply. Similarly, uh, anytime that the cost of production would increase, we would have a decrease in supply, as you can see on the graph uh, right to the right of this. So while it's important to understand what causes increases and decreases in supply and demand, in the next video, we're going to consider uh, what impact these changes may have on the equilibrium quantity and price and on consumer and producer welfare.